Why do you need to protect your vCenter server with your life? Well, that's because your vCenter server is the heart of your vSphere environment. Now, join me today where we're going to be performing a backup and most importantly, a restore of your vCenter server. I'm going to make this so easy that even this guy can do it. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome guys to another episode on the Sysadmin Tutorials YouTube channel. Now you heard in the intro exactly what we're going to be doing. So without wasting any time, we're going to jump straight in. Up on screen here, we have our vCenter server. So I'm going to be logging into this bad boy with administrator at vSphere.local and the password. Once we've logged into our vCenter server, there's two important things that we need to record down here. And that's in order to perform our restore. One of them is going to be the version, as you can see on screen here, 7.0.3. And the second one is going to be that build number, which is 20150588. And the reason why we need those two numbers is because we need to download the exact ISO matching this version and this build number to perform our restore. If you try to perform a restore of your vCenter server using any other version, it is going to fail. So we need to make sure that that is matching. Now, a quick tip to find out what that build version equals in regards to, is it update two? Is it update three? What version of update three is it? Well, we head on over to VMware. There's a website, I'm going to put it up on screen here. And we just basically copy that build number version and we search for it in the page. So let's go up onto that page right now. Don't worry about copying this URL down because I am going to put it in the video description below. What we need to do is go back to our vCenter server and we're just going to copy down that build number. Once the build number is copied, we'll go across to that other tab where we have our vCenter build number versions. And we just do a control F for find, control V to paste that build number. And you can see right up the top here, we are at vCenter server. 7 update 3G. So we need to make sure that we have vCenter Server 7 update 3G ISO image available to perform the restore. Now I'm going to head on over to the VMware website and I'm going to download this ISO image. It is a little bit large. So we're going to kickstart that now and get that going. And then we're going to go and talk about performing a backup of our vCenter server. Here we are in the product download section in VMware. Just going to head on over and click on go to downloads next to vCenter server. Now there's two versions of vCenter that you can download here. The first one being the full appliance and the second one being just the update bundle. So we need to download the full appliance, which is that first one there saying VMware vCenter server appliance. You can see on screen it is eight gig. It's quite a large download. So I'm going to click on download now, get that going in the background. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start talking about setting up your vCenter to perform some backups. And away we go. We have started to download that ISO image. So now we're going to head back to a different URL, which you may or may not have been to before. And that's our vCenter server URL. Whether you're using your IP address or a DNS name, we need to append colon. And then the port number is 5480. When you type in that URL into your browser and hit enter, we're going to end up right at this page and we're going to log in here with root and the root password. So remember, this is to the vCenter appliance. Once we've logged in, we're going to click on backup on the left hand side. Now up on screen, I have performed one backup of this vCenter server using the backup tool, which is included with vCenter. Before we start here, we're going to need to download an FTP server. Now for my lab, I'm just using FileZilla FTP server. My FTP server is sitting on another computer. So I've RDP'd into that server right now. Once you've downloaded FileZilla server and you've gone through and installed it, then you're going to see a screen that looks something like this. However, the log screen is probably going to be empty at this stage. And what we need to do is just head on over and create a user account. That user account is going to be what the vCenter server appliance is going to use to log into the FTP server and upload all those backup files too. Now you don't need to use FileZilla server. However, it is a free FTP server. If you have another FTP server of choice or you already have one installed, then feel free to go ahead and use that. But the setup steps are pretty much exactly the same. I'm gonna go and look at the user accounts on this FTP server. 
And the user account that I'm using here is called vlab-a-vc1. So I've created that user account. I've put in the password. And then just as importantly as the username and password, we head on over to shared folders. I have added in here the folder where the backups are going to be stored. So you can see the path here up on screen. And if I use Windows Explorer to go and have a look at that path, you'll see that one backup that I've performed so far. If I go into that folder, you will see the folder with the server name there. If I double click on that folder, you'll then see the backup date with a couple of other values in that folder as well. If I drill down into that folder, then we have all of our backup files located right here. Now I'm going to switch screens back to our vCenter appliance and let's have a look at what this backup setup looks like. To do that, I'm just going to click on that edit button at the top right side and let's just go through these settings really quickly. So for the backup location, we have our FTP server where you can see my IP address 192.168.1.110. That is the other server that we just RDP'd into running FileZilla server. We then have our username and password to connect into that FTP server. We then have a schedule, the mindset to weekly on Sunday at 9 p.m. to perform a backup. Optionally, we can encrypt this backup by typing in a encryption password here and then confirming that password by typing that in again on the next line. And then we have the number of backups that we're going to retain. So I've set mine to just retain three. However, you can also select retain all the backups. However, just be careful of the amount of space it's going to use on your drive. Lastly, we then have the data that we're going to back up. So I've unticked stats, events, and tasks because I don't really care about containing them in the backups and I don't really care about restoring those. However, by default, and you cannot untick this, is the inventory and configuration. Now, once you've configured that for your environment, you can go ahead and click on save. And then what you can do, you can either wait for that schedule to kick in. However, I'm a little bit impatient. I'm going to click on that backup now. So I'm going to do that right now. Once the backup now window comes up, you can see that there is an option at the top there to use the backup location and username from the backup schedule. So that's what we're going to be clicking. And it will just save retyping all that information out again. Once we do that, we are going to have to type in our FTP password once again. So I'm just going to type that in right now. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click on start. As you can see up on screen, our last backup took about three minutes. So hopefully this one takes about three minutes as well. But in the interest of time, I am going to pause the video and then we'll come back once this is finished. Right, guys, we are back. And as you can see up on screen, that backup that we just took, took three minutes and 21. So just nine seconds more than our previous backup, which is fine. No problem at all. We now have all our backups done and we are protected, right? So. What we're going to move on to now is simulating a vCenter server failure. So we're going to power off this vCenter server, and then we're going to use this backup image coming from that FTP server to perform a full restore of our vCenter server. Now I'm going to launch my command prompt, and I'm just going to run a constant ping to this server. And then once it stops pinging, we know that this server is powered off. Now here's our constant pings running in our command prompt. In the screen in the background here, the vCenter server appliance, I'm simply going to go up to the actions menu and I'm going to select shut down. Yes, to shut down the system. And then we're going to go back to the command prompt and we're just going to wait for that timeout. There's our ping timeout. So that means that that vCenter server is now shut down. Also, while we've been going ahead and doing all this stuff, you probably noticed or maybe not, but that ISO image has finished downloading. So we've got eight gig of that ISO image that we're going to mount up and then we're going to run through the restore process. Here's my ISO image. I'm simply going to right click on that and select mount. Once the ISO image is mounted, we go down to VCSA UI installer and we'll double click on that folder. We'll go to Win32 and then we'll just go ahead and click on installer.exe. Up on screen here, we have four options and you probably know exactly which one we're going to pick and that is the restore. Now there's two stages for this. So the first stage, it's going to be deploying the virtual machine. And then the second stage is going to be copying across all that data that came from that backup. So pulling that across from the FTP server. So let's start off with this stage one. We'll go ahead and click next. We'll accept the end user license agreement. In this screen, we'll enter in our FTP server details. So in my case, I put in the IP address. I put in the username and the password for where these vCenter backups are located. 
and then we'll go ahead and click on next. Now that's logged into the FTP server and we can see our folder structure on the left side. I'm going to double click on vCenter and I'm going to click on the next folder. And then here are the folders or here are the backup dates that we've performed our backups on. So today is the 13th of August. So I'm going to go here to the 13th of August one. And as you can see up here, you want to select the folder that contains the backup dash metadata.json file. So that's this one right here. And we can see the backup dash metadata.json file right here. So I'm just going to select on that folder and we'll go and funnily enough, click on select. And that populates the rest of the path up the top on the location here. So we'll go and click on next. Now here's a quick review of the backup file along with the version number. So remember that's very important because we need to match that ISO file to it. All right, we'll go ahead and click on next. Now in this screen, it's asking us, where do you want us to restore this virtual machine? Now, in my case, I'm running this lab as a nested lab. Now, what nested lab means, if you're not aware of it, is that it is a vSphere environment running within another vSphere environment. Now, I call that other environment my base vSphere. And then within there, I'm running this vCenter along with its ESXi hosts. So for me, I'm going to put in there my base vCenter address my username and my password. But in most cases, you're probably just going to point to the ESXi host that was under management from this vCenter server that we're about to restore. So fill in the details for your environment. And then once you're done, we can go ahead and click on next. If you have any questions in regards to this, just let me know, put it in the comments below, and I'm happy to answer anything to do with nested environments or what you should enter in this screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And we're going to accept the certificate from our base vCenter server. In your case, it might be from your ESXi host. So I'll click on yes. It then goes ahead and displays the folder structure for my vCenter server. And I'm going to be placing this restored virtual machine into vLab and then site A. So I've selected that and I'm just going to go ahead and click on next. This is my base vSphere environment. So it all might be coming together and making sense now. But that's my data center object my cluster, and then the four ESXi hosts that I have running as my base layer. So I'm just going to click on the cluster and click on next. Now it's asking what do you want the virtual machine name to be? For my VM name, I'm going to be calling it VLAB A VC1 Restored. And then I'm just going to type in and confirm the root password. So this is the root password to log into your vCenter server appliance. Here you can pick your deployment size. So if you want to give your virtual machine a little bit more vCPU or memory or even storage, you can adjust the deployment size there and the storage size to your needs. I'm going to be leaving mine as small because it is just a basic lab. So I'll go ahead and click next. Now for select data store, just go ahead and select the data store that you want to restore the vCenter VM into. For the network, just make sure that you have selected the correct network on that first option. And the rest of the information, the IP address, the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS servers should all be pre-populated from the backup file. So there shouldn't be anything that you need to change there, but do double check it and just make sure that that is all okay. Now that brings us to the end of the restore wizard, and we have a summary up on screen. Now go through and check all those settings, make sure that they're all correct. If you do need to make any changes, just hit that back button go back to that section, make the changes, and then make your way back to this screen. Now, most importantly, guys, if you do like this content, then I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on this video. And if you want to keep up to date with all the content that's going to be coming out in the future, then hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell. You guys know what to do. I really appreciate it. And let's click that finish button. Now, as mentioned, there are two stages. So we've completed stage one of this restore. It's going to go ahead and deploy the virtual center server within my base vSphere environment. However, it's probably going to be onto your ESXi host if you're going through this. This is going to take a little bit of time. So like we did previously, I am going to pause the video and then we'll come back once this is deployed. Okay, stage one is now complete. So we can celebrate, but not yet. We need to get through stage two. So what we're going to do is click on the continue button here. And we go to the stage two wizard. So we'll click on next. And this is where we're going to be restoring from the backup file. 
So all that information is up on screen here. If you do have an encryption password, you have your chance to type that in here. Uh, we're not using the encryption password in this demo. So we'll just go ahead and we'll click on that next button. If your original vCenter server is not shut down, now is the time to do it because it is going to bring this server up with the IP address. So you're going to end up with a conflict of IP addresses there. However, we have shut down our vCenter server well in advance. So we are safe to proceed here. This is just a summary of the restore wizard. So not much we can change here really, except for that encryption password if you want to hit back. However, I'm going to go ahead and smack that finish button. A quick warning that you won't be able to stop or pause this once it starts. That is fine with me. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Once again, this is going to take a little bit of time. I think the VM deployment was roughly around about 20 minutes or so. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video again and then we'll come back once this is complete. Our stage two is now complete. So we can go ahead, click on close, and then we'll go and have a look at our vCenter server and see what it looks like after the restore. You can see that our pings have started again because it has taken on the same IP address. Next, we'll log into the vCenter appliance server. So remember that's with the username root and with the root password. And with the URL, it is with the IP address or the DNS name colon 5480. I'll refresh my screen here in the background and I'll go ahead and log in. You can see here the uptime has only been 21 minutes. We've got the same version, the same build number, the health status is all good. One thing that I do want to check is just in the services. So if we click services on the left hand side, and I'm going to sort this by startup type, and we just want to make sure that all the automatic services have been started. So we have a look on the state column on the right, and we'll just scroll down here, make sure that they're all started, which they are. So we should be able to go ahead and log into this vCenter server now. Now I've just browsed straight to the DNS name of my vCenter server, and then we'll just go ahead and click on launch vSphere client HTML5. We'll enter in here our administrator at vSphere.local along with the password. And there we have it. We have our fully restored vCenter server. Now, one thing to note, which I didn't mention before, if we just switch back to that appliance web UI and we go down to backup, we do still have our backup settings here to the FTP server. However, as you can see, we can't see the previous backups there. So what I suggest you do is come in here, perform a manual backup, and then that way we have that first backup of this new server. And then from there, you can then let it just run through the schedule. Or if you need to create more backups, just come in here, hit that backup now button, and you can create a couple of manual backups. Just before we go, one last thing I just wanted to show you was our base of vSphere environment, because remember, I was telling you that this environment is nested. So I just want to show you the vCenter server in the back end here, where you can see the two VMs, one that's shut down, which was our original source VM. And then second is this restored VM. So I'm just going to log into that and bring it up on screen now. Up on screen here, we're in the VM folders. So I've drilled down to vLab and then the site A folder. And highlighted here is the virtual machine, which was our source of vCenter server called vLab AVC1. Now we simulated the disaster where we shut down that vCenter server and then went through and performed the restore. The virtual machine just under that vLab AVC1 restored is our brand new virtual center server. Now, what we can do here is we can delete that original source and we can come back to the new destination rename that to just vlab avc1 and tidy up that a little bit now that concludes this episode on how to back up and restore your virtual center server appliance i hope you guys liked it and found value in this content i really want to thank you for watching this video and like always we'll see you again in the next episode all right bye for now